Well, welcome, Dylan. Happily married man. Proud father of three kids. Yes. Practicing lawyer. Yes. And highly engaged Catholic. Yes. Have you always been this engaged in your faith? I wouldn't say in the ways that I am currently. I don't think I've always been engaged uh, in that way. Although I was always prayerful. I was a prayerful kid. Mm. And so that uh, was really, I think, the roots of uh, what eventually became more engagement. Was there anything, have you had sort of moments, spiritual experiences that kind of accelerated your faith or boosted your faith that has kind of stuck with you into your adult years yes. or as part of your adult years? When I was away in law school, uh, it was a time of great personal growth, uh, living away from home, um, and of course finding my footing and finding my anchorage. And that involved lots of walking between classes and studies, but also going back to Mass. And I had been going back to Mass in my undergraduate years, but this kind of redoubled in law school. Uh, but I really was struggling with this question of uh, this, this Jesus character, if I could put it that way. Right. I, I didn't have a problem praying to God and, you know, as, as, as transcendent as, as, as being it, itself. But I didn't know what to make of Jesus. You know, was he really perfect? Really, was he really who he said he was? And so after law school, uh, this was finally resolved when I started practicing. And I sort of went off the beaten path. And I, in my own explorations of faith, I was seriously considering converting to a different religion. Okay. So I think God has his ways of walking you back into the fullness of the Catholic faith. And in my case, it was through this near conversion to another religion, another faith. But he brought me in. And it took him, but I'm stubborn. And I am very, if I could sort of put it this way, very, um, you've got to show me the evidence. But he worked with that. So I'd gone to bed one night and said to myself, uh, tomorrow is the day I'm going to convert. I don't, <laughs> I don't know how, but, that, but that, that was that. And then I woke up the next I woke up early the next morning. It was before the break of dawn. There was a leak coming through our kitchen window and dripping onto the pooling on the countertop. And I just felt unsettled. And somehow I related that to my decision. Now, that may be all psychological or not, but it just struck me as hold on, pause. And I remember that I was reading, I was reading scripture at the time, and there was a New Testament on the kitchen table. So this is early in the morning. Everyone in the house is still asleep. And I pick up the New Testament. I didn't realize this was, I think, St. Francis of Assisi's method, but I picked it up and I just sort of picked a spot and read it. And it was, I think it was a letter by St. Paul, but the bottom line was, uh, there are many false prophets, stay the course, uh, don't, don't convert away from the faith. And I thought, ooh, okay. So I closed that, I said, okay, tell you what, we'll put it off for another day. And then months go by and start flirting again with this other religion, go to bed one night and say, tomorrow's the day. <laughs> so think of the blind man, took you know, a few <laughs> attempts to, to remove his blindness and, and have him see, that, that was me. So I wake up the next morning and I, of course there, I'm saying today's the day I'm gonna convert. Well, I, and, and, and basically I look back at my notes and I'll sort of condense the story because this happened in quick succession. Basically, I get to my office, and there's a guy parked in my spot, which never happens. So you're, you're practicing a, uh, as a lawyer at yes, this time? Yes. Okay. okay. But there was a Jesus fish on the, on the back bumper, and I thought, <laughs> ah, today's the day I'm about to convert, right? And I thought, ah, probably a coincidence. So I go to my desk and start reading my emails and LinkedIn invitation from a priest. And I thought, hmm, that's interesting. If God is, you know, trying to reach me, this is pretty high tech, <laughs> you know. It's like, hey, that, uh, it could be just a coincidence. And, I, and then I got a, an email from a, a guy who was starting to take a leadership role in the church that I had been attending, although not fully, and he was inviting me to pray on a Saturday, and that had never happened before. I thought, well, maybe that's a coincidence. And then I got another email 
from a guy that I didn't know well. He was a friend of a friend of mine who all I knew about him was he's a very devout Christian. And he was inviting me to lunch. And this was all happening in quick succession. I thought, maybe it's just a coincidence. And I go to a meeting with an insurance, for an insurance policy, with a nurse to take, you know, blood pressure and all this stuff. And as I'm answering questions, she says to me, she says, are you, are you going through like a crossroads? You seem unsettled. Oh my goodness. And I thought, well, this is it. <laughs> I, I, I wasn't really used to talking about <clears throat> faith openly. And she delved into her conversion experience where she had been in a massive accident, broken vertebrae, uh, x-rays, uh, miraculous healing of her vertebrae, more x-rays which showed the, the, the fractures gone, the, the physicians telling her, you know, wow, what vitamins are you on? We, there's no more fractures. Um, and then her deep conversion. And she was telling me, this, this nurse basically like, she said, what, what's going on? I, I told her I was thinking of converting, and she basically stopped me in my track. She said, don't. She says, you know, don't. You belong to Jesus. And she goes on about Jesus. And I wasn't used to talking about Jesus this way. But she's really lathering it on. I thought, okay, well, I better pause. And then I go to a meeting shortly after that meeting. And I think it was the next, I checked my notes, and it was like, it was around that time. And I take instructions for a will from this new client. And at the end of the meeting, he says, okay, Dylan, now that we've talked about what you want to talk about, I want to discuss now what I want to talk about. I thought, that's a bit bold, but okay, you're the client. So he leans in and he says, how's your relationship with Jesus? And I, I, mean, I almost fell off my chair. I thought, I thought now I better, now I, th I said, I, I submit. That was that. And I later looked back at my day book. I said, what day of the year was that? And it was the Feast of the Conversion of St. Paul. Oh, my goodness. So anyway, so it was from that point forward where I really started taking Jesus very seriously, as seriously as I possibly can. So in the full Trinitarian God and, and, and worship, I started seeing uh, CCO uh, at the former Archdiocesan Center, going to Mass on Wednesdays, any chance I could. Mass, the Eucharist, uh, then of course begin confession because I start feeling convicted. And that's uh, basically how I, I arrived in my faith journey where I am now. Yeah. Wow. I mean, so that's a, a powerful story where you were ready to make a decision, yeah. but you were open yeah. and you received a number of signs which, you know, maybe at first seemed like coincidences, but the sum. Yeah. of all of those signs yeah. seem to kind of collide together yeah. and kind of tip the scale towards yeah. towards choosing choosing to follow Jesus. Yes, and then the proof is in the pudding. You know, Christ says, uh, you judge the tree by the fruit that it bears. Yeah. So ultimately, you, you get to see when you're practicing your faith, when you're praying, when you engage with others, when you follow problems with the Holy Spirit, you get to see the fruit. And that includes miraculous things 